Greetings and salutations, Charlton66 here again to discuss a few comic books and to uh, show some favorite westerns that I have. I know westerns are not everyone's cup of tea, um, even though people do like them, and I know uh, I've seen them in people's collections and whatnot. And but as far as popularity, they've dwindled down a lot, considering superhero and even science fiction. So going to show a recent, um, some recent pickups that I have from varying covers only because of the cover artist and I really wanted the title and I got them at, at a good price and just some, like I said, some um, uh, favorite comics and some favorite issues that, that, that I have uh, and also some more Thunder Agents goodness and uh, and the artist edition that they put out um, this year. So without further ado, I just want to thank again everyone who's viewed and subscribed um, I'm up to uh, 70 subscribers now, which I think is, is phenomenal, seeing how long um, I haven't been on YouTube that long uh, making videos. So that's 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 pretty it's pretty pretty neat. And I do appreciate everyone's input, their comments. Uh, I responded to every comment that's been given. And I do appreciate the positive feedback. And if it's something I can improve on too, please, by all means, um, put it down in, in the comments. I know. We do this for fun, but, you know, if it's something that no one's getting anything out, out of it or um, it's just um, therapeutic for me or something I want to do to relieve stress and to discuss comic books and to have a forum to talk about this, it's more about not more about what you guys think in the community, what, I, what my input is to it. So that's that's always important to me. I just don't want to be here rambling on about things no one has any interest in. So. But everything has been really good. The comments, uh, what people have thought about my my videos, it's it's really um, it, it's invigorating that you know that I can do this and, and it means something to someone. So on to the books. Um, I missed the Monsters Unleashed um, recent series, which I really wanted. I missed it, and for, fortunately, I was able to find um, the first four issues, with the exception of issue two. The variant covers by um, Frank Avia, which I'm a big fan of his, of his artwork, and I think that he's the perfect cover artist for, for these titles. So the Monsters Unleashed one with the Frank Avia cover with Monstrum, which to me, you know, there's no what other artist right now that you could think of that really captures these covers, these characters on these covers in Frank Avia. is Monstrum. And um, issue two... I don't know who the cover artist is on this one, but it wasn't the, uh, it's, this is the direct edition, but it's a cool cover nonetheless with the mole man, but um, love to have a Frank Avia cover. Number two, number three, Return of the Martian, great Frank Avia cover, which is, I think he captures these guys pretty good. It's a great, so far I'm really enjoying the series. It, it's pretty fun. And this is my favorite one so far. Zutak. Looks like a 50s, uh, 1950s uh, movie poster. I think he did a phenomenal job. There we go. I think he did a phenomenal job with that. I love the lighting on this. Just superb. Those are some recent books that I picked up. Um, that recent, the most recent stuff I have is nothing um, special. So... I really don't cover my recent books unless it's um, something I think you guys will enjoy or something new that I can contribute. I also um, picked this up a while back, Top Secret Adventures with Spy-Man. It has Steranko's, um, Jim Steranko's first pro work is in this title right here, this, this issue here. And there's a page of Neil Adams, um, one, one ad page by, with Neil Adams artwork. And it's Reed Cranlin here as well. I believe is also with George Tuska. So you got a lot. You get a bang for your buck with this with this book. Again, it's pretty undervalued. You can you can probably copy for around ten bucks. But again, top secret Spider Man. Ten bucks in mid grade. You know I've seen it twenty thirty in a little bit in, in this shape here. But it's worth having in your collection with Stranko's first pro work. Reed Crandall, George Tuska. You know it speaks for itself. It's Rip Hunter Time Master number 20 with time travel with Hitler on the cover. Pretty good storyline. I 
one of my favorite Charlton's um, starting my racket squad racket squad run um, this is the first issue racket squad geez racket squad in action first issue Charlton the other ones um the first I think two two or three or four one of the issues has the explosion by Steve Ditko on the cover where someone's throwing a bomb through the uh, through the store window and it's blowing up in someone's face. It's one of the early earlier issues of, of Racket Squad, I believe. This is the first issue. Pretty pretty high grade, pretty nice shape. Happy to have it. One of my earliest Charlton sci-fi books, Space Adventures number two, from 1952, which is in pretty nice shape. Pretty happy with this. With the, with this black cover from 1952. Really can't complain about this one. Really nice. Also, a while back, I picked up a Captain Arrow number 22, LB Cole cover. Uh, I think there's a Mighty Might story in this, if I'm not mistaken. Not one of the most exciting LB Cole, one of the least exciting. Um, LB Cole covers, but um, those colors and everything else in the the layout is LB Cole, and of course he signed it. But it's not as exciting as some of these other um, more well known covers. Got a nice copy of, of um, Metal Men number thirty one, which is an upgrade from the copy that I had. But this is this is pretty nice. This is pretty nice. Um, pretty nice shape. So I got this at a pretty good price a while back. These were something I was rebacking and boarding. It's got the good old um, date stamp on it, February fifteenth. So this is um, love this love this copy. Got Skyman number three, one of my favorite lesser known Golden Age characters. I got an awesome commission done, and I meant to show it with this comic um, by Bob McLeod of uh, of Skyman, which he did a phenomenal job with. I'll show it in another video at some point. But um, Skyman number three, Ogden Whitney, great, uh, great character, fun character, and it's a fun comic book series. This is from I think this is from forty. I want to say 44 or 45. Oh, 47. 1947. It's a great Skyman comic. A lot of stuff going on in it. There's a great character visually. He rides a sky plane. So it's a pretty good uh pretty good series. Um hard to find them in grade, but uh when I when I find them, I, I'll I'll pick them up. They're, they're a little pricey, but again I dig the character. And again I learned about Skyman from those fanzines I talked about earlier. Um the official handbook, official comic book handbook. I um, learned of that. I learned the Skyman from from that. And learned to like the character a lot. Here's an oddball book. Otto Binder and um, C. C. Beck doing the artwork. Fat Man, the Human Flying Saucer. Who would have thunk? If anyone has not seen this book, it's worth picking up just for the novelty of it. And it's a it's a fun book. Number two is pretty. Pretty scarce compared to one and three. I think it was just a three issue series, and um, number two is harder to find. Like with a lot of number twos are harder to find than the rest of the series. Number twos, and of course the last issues. But I think this was only a three issue series, as we can see why it was only a three issue series. But still a fun book nonetheless. It's a novelty, fun to have in your collection. It's a fun to read. Again, CC Beck. 
auto binder, CC back, who can go wrong, right? Here's a nice high grade copy of America's Best TV Comics with what was on television in 1966 on ABC. So you got um, all these different characters uh, appearing on, on ABC during this time in 1967. Good old Jack Kirby, Mr. Fantastic there. Nice high grade copy there, really white, stark white cover. Big fan of Doc Savage. I've been a bad fan of Doc Savage since I was a teenager. Um, got my Doc Savage statue there. I got some commissions with Doc in them. And got all the paperbacks, some pulps, you know, all the, all the newer stuff that's been coming out. Um, with Doc Savage teaming up with uh, The Shadow and whatnot. Novels, which is... Uh, which I can never get enough of Doc Savage. He's he's one of my favorite. First really first superhero really to me, and um, so any comic book version I like getting. And one of my favorites is the Gold Key one shot with the James Bama cover, which is this is a pretty nice shape. Um, the artwork inside, I think it's again Jack Sparling. Um, could have been a little bit better, I think, being Doc Savage. You look at the cover and you're thinking, what's the inside going to look like? And compared to the cover, it's kind of a disappointment inside. But, you know, Doc Savage completist or a fan of Doc Savage, it's worth having us in, in your collection. Big fan of Doc Savage. One of, um, one of some of my favorite Westerns that I have, big Western guy. Um, some of them, uh, the first issue... Of Bobby Benson's B Barbie Riders. It's Overstreet Guy says it's scarce. This is the only copy that I've, I've ever seen. Um, found out at a good price. It's not in the best of shape, but um, any condition is better than no condition. So, um, got this first issue and uh, happy to have this in my collection. And then um, this Wild Bill Hickok painted cover by Howard Winfield who was a Western and abstract artist um, later on in years, the artwork that hung in galleries and whatnot. But he painted this cover, Wild Bill Hickok. It's got condition issues up here, but I love that cover. Love that cover. Number four, Wild Bill Hickok. First issue of Western Roundup, big fan of Gene Autry. And of course, Gene Autry and a bunch of other people appear. Johnny Mac Brown, Roy, Roy Rogers, um... Who else we got in here? Bill Elliott, Johnny Mac Brown. All these guys appeared in Western Roundup. This is the first issue. And these Dells are hard to find, particularly the cardboard covers in decent shape because they fold, crease so easily. But um, it's still decent enough shape. You know, doesn't come apart or anything like that with the glue on the spine. And again, it's the first issue. I have almost a complete run of the Western Roundup. I'm missing probably about maybe seven issues of, of the run. First issue, Western Roundup. And then this issue, I think this is the only issue. Volume 1, number 1. The Sky Sheriff, starring Breeze Lawson. Wings of the Law Against Crime. Which is pretty darn cool. One of these oddball, off the wall. Good Western comic books. Got some action, a lot of good action on the cover there. Sky Sheriff. Pretty nice to have in my collection. Pretty cool comic. And this Buffalo Bill Jr. Um, Dell Four Color 856. I actually met Dick Jones and um, had him sign this. And I also sent Hippie a while back a nice signed photo of Wild Bill. I'm sorry, of Buffalo Bill Jr. But uh, it's signed by Dick Jones, which is. Um, your favorite my collection. He was a stunt guy, worked in um, flying um, Range Rider, the Flying A, and uh, he was a, he was a stunt guy in some of the westerns in the in the fifties. Big fan of Zane Grey novels, and this cover of of Nevada, which is pretty well returned Nevada, but it's Nevada on the cover from the the um, Nevada stories and uh, him appearing in some of the novels with Zane Grey. I think it's such a great cover.
all black and it's still in pretty decent shape. Zane Gray, Stories of the West. And the iconic the American flag cover for Lone Ranger for the 76, I believe. I think it's 76. Let's double check. Yep, 76, 1954. Awesome uh, classic, they call it a classic flag cover in the in Overstreet. And you can tell how cool that cover is. Lone Ranger's got someone in his sights. Lone Ranger 76. And I got this uh, Bobby Benson B. Barbie Riders number 15. Nice Ghost Rider cover, and I have it signed by Dick Ayers right up there. Again, Dick Ayers, you know what? He's one of these unsung heroes of the Golden and Silver Age. I mean, he's a great artist. He inked Kirby a lot. Um, he's just he just never got the credit. I don't think that he really deserved. But um, he, him, and um, Ben Sullivan created the original Ghost Rider, 1949, I believe. But there it's signed by Dick Ayers, number 15, Bobby Benson's B. Bobby Riders. And Best of the West, number four, also signed by Dick Ayers, the Ghost Rider story here, and he's signed right by, right by Ghost Rider's head. Best of the West, number four. Got all those nice stories in a straight era. It was a Western story, Durango Kid. Excuse me, a Western radio show, which is one of my favorite radio shows of the 50s, is, is Straight Arrow. Durango Kid, Tim Holt, and of course, my favorite in the book, Ghost Rider. These are my two favorite features, Straight Arrow and uh, Ghost Rider. Durango Kid was good, was good. Don't get me wrong, but big fan of the radio show. Then I found out about the comic book. I did not know... Magazine in, magazine Enterprises actually had the Straight Arrow comic. I was a fan of the radio show first. Then I discovered the, the comic book. And Magazine Enterprises, Straight Arrow actually had his, his own series. Outside of Best of the West. So did Tim Holt and Durango Kid. I got a page of Durango I mean, yeah, I got a page of Tim Holt artwork. Right over there on the wall. Right by uh, the Black Panther statue there. It's from Tim Holt, number... Page five, uh, issue 5, page 17. And I yet to find that issue in my collection. I would have showed it with that in the artwork. Nice Durango Kid. Just mentioned him. Charles Starrett, he, who was the actor who portrayed um, the Durango Kid in the movies and TV. But here's a nice... Again, 50s ray gun technology on the cover, which I love. Wiping out those trees. I don't know if his six-shooter can handle this, but uh, but he wins in the end, though. Don't they always? Durango Kid. I think this is, uh, what is this? issue number seven. Really nice shape. Probably very fine. Really happy to have, have this in my collection. It's hard to find some of these magazine enterprises. And me, some of the westerns in really, really good shape. And when they do, they're 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 pricey. But if you're a western fan, they're they're worth having in, um, having them in your, in your collection. Um. So that's it for the comic books. As far as um. The Thunder Agents. Um, I have the portfolio, the artist edition. It's pretty big, so I'm not going to go through every every page of it because it's not like a book it's got plates in here and this alone is worth the price of admission look at that right from the original art I'm not going to go through every single one of them but if you get a chance to find this by all means pick it up it's hard to find a lot of the artwork because um it's in people's collections, 
And I know some people who have a whole book in their collection of Wally Wood. I'm trying to find this is the one too that's worth the price of admission. I can get it out. Right there, look at that. Dynamo number three. Flipping awesome. It's huge. Sorry I'm doing it like this, but it's a, it's a huge portfolio. Look at that. No one but Wally Wood could convey that. Tremendous. The use of the, the, the spotting of the blacks. The stars, the smoke, just all of it. Tremendous. Again, there's about 15, I think 20 plates that are in that are in, that are in this. It's the artist edition. It's pretty darn big. The only price $50. So if you can see it, it's worth picking up. Uh, like I said, just those two plates alone that that I showed are worth the price of admission. Dynamo in all of his glory. Just awesome. Well, again, guys, thank you for viewing. Thanks for your comments. Thanks for subscribing. I hope uh, this was informative for some people and um, seeing some comics I haven't seen before. I appreciate uh, the feedback. And again, thanks, guys. Enjoy the rest of your weekend.